there we go. Still getting used to this um, new format, still getting used to this new app. And um, hopefully, my um, guest on and we'll be ready to go for it soon. So just bear with me. Um, so this next up we're going to be talking about uh judge dread and uh with a childhood friend of mine one of my um there were two people who um the kira regan get right all right sounds all good so let me just do a quick introduction so when i when i moved when my mom got re, um, remarried and moved, um, married a white fella here from um, Pakia from England, living here in New Zealand, through the newspaper called the New Zealand Herald, which she put an ad on in Fiji, and two two guys saw it, a millionaire and my dad, and she said uh, the million doesn't millionaire doesn't have any kids, so I don't think he's going to look after my son that well, and so she decided to go with um, with a divorced. Um, gentleman who had already had two teenage kids uh, just slightly older than me and she said this is the guy I want um, to marry because he's got kids he knows how to be a good father even though dad had been divorced at that time and so on but mum mum being the wise woman she was she decided that this is what we're gonna do with my life and so when she came over and stayed here for about six to eight months and then she came back to Fiji and brought me over and so there was two families. Uh, basically, there was a family called the Costas, who were um, who worked at the dairy company, and uh, which was an amazing place in, uh, um, across the school, uh, Moro Prime School. And then I lived on Lady Street, across directly, almost totally opposite me lived Regan and his family. Regan's parents used to own the the pet shop there in Moro on Lady, uh, you know, Moro Town, which you used to be. One of the greatest hubbubs in Northland because it had the huge um, dairy company um, and then it also had the huge EFCO. So you had the meat and you had the dairy. And so it back in the 80s, 70s, uh, Moria was a bubbling, bubbling, bursting full of money and, you know, very upcoming um, township. And then suddenly they took the dairy away. And they slimmed it and so went away with all the uh, executives and the money that was there and then slowly the town started disappearing into becoming what it is now and for a while there people have been trying to make it better and it's doing pretty well as, as a little township but it's not where it used to be now um so regan lived across the street from me and as i mentioned that he got me in 2000 2000 ad i had never heard of 2000 ad ever you don't we never comics like that in Fiji. The only thing I ever saw in Fiji was Goofy and Mc, and Donald Duck and Scrooge. And I didn't, still didn't even know what, what that freaking comic book was until, you know, what even a comic book was until I came to New Zealand. And then we had school, we had Tintin, we had Asterix. But then there was Regan with this freaking 2000 AD comics. Now, take it away. Tell us all about 2000 AD as, you know, what got you into it? How did you get in, you know, start up with all that? Well, wow. wow. um, uh, I think I started, I started in 2018. 2018. What? what? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's introduce you first. Introduce yourself first. I think I jumped the gun there. <laughs> oh, there's not much to say. Just another old fart from Moto, I suppose. <laughs> so you, you're a musician. You put um, a whole bunch of music out, instrumental. Is what's, um, and also, do you, you've, I haven't listened to a lot of your stuff, but you, you've got some amazing music and hopefully you put chuck your link and then get people get to it on, is it on soundcloud your work no it's all on Bandcamp. um well the stuff that i've done solo uh, i've done a lot of stuff yeah. for other people um we call it session work playing guitar yeah. bass, um helping with arranging donated some song ideas and stuff like that some mm. of it's collaboration others been work for hire but um yeah i've probably been on about i think 11 cds at this point well um, and another one coming out, COVID sessions. So we'll see how that yeah. goes. <laughs> so, um, so you've worked. Um, so how many? I'm um, like you talk about eleven 
um, albums. How much? How many of them are your own? Well, that's the thing. I've got three of my own, um, and the rest of them have been projects. Some of them have been uh, compilations of uh, various artists getting together and collaborating, and some of them have been. I guess you could call them band affairs, where we've all gotten together and written in a room. But uh, I really wanted to have something that uh, was representative of the music that was pure for me, yeah. rather than um, playing being a hired gun. And that's mm. actually where my artist name came from, Gunner, being a hired yeah. gun for other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the Gunner projects that I do tend to be the ones that are all either. I've done everything myself or I've written all the music myself and gotten other people in to help me with it. So you, you live in Auckland and, uh, and you've got a whole bunch of kids and, um, but you also teach music. No, I don't teach music anymore. I did that for 14 oh, okay. years. I decided I wanted to change. Yeah. So what are you doing at the moment? Like, you know, apart from us being in lockdown and all that, but what do you do professionally? Professionally, I'm a school teacher. Cool. What age group? Well, that varies. When you're a school teacher, sometimes you teach younger, sometimes you teach older, but I tend to stick around the intermediate age. Okay. So form two, form one, like back in the days we used to call it. Yeah, yeah, oh, seven yeah. and eight now. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about 2000 AD and, you know, how did you get into it? Because, you know, we used to have a really good, really, really good um, bookshop there. And more of yeah, we did of merchants, uh, stationery and toys. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, well, merchants, I, I originally started by, um, let's see, the comics I was drawn to, anything that had robots I was interested in. So I started out with some DC comics called Weird War that had the creature commandos in it. And somehow uh, I switched sides and went to the UK comics, um, started out with Eagle. And uh, while I was collecting Eagle, um, I also took a look at the one that was always sitting on the shelf right next to it, 2000 AD. It had the coolest covers. Mm. And, so um, what what year was this that you, we're talking oh, about? 81, 82. Mm. So you basically got in, so you saw the Eagle, but then you also, how long were you reading the Eagle before you moved over to 2000 AD? I'd say probably about two years. It was around about Prog 300 that I switched over to 2018. Yeah. Now, I have a 300 here somewhere. Whoa. Uh, let me see. I've got 324. And this is because when I when I had the comic shop, people dropped this off. Right? So I have, um, I have a... Prog 100 on the cover. All right. Let's see. If, whoop, here we go. Yep. Sam Slade. Yep. All right, so there's that. So I think there's a there's a run from two seventy three, right? So this is the there's this one, all the way. Oh, I'm going to pull that out and show you that in a minute. But um, all the way up to two forty four four twenty five. Right. So. This is yeah. This is just a huge pile, which is like what around a hundred, maybe not a hundred, maybe I think a few copies. This um, this gentleman dropped it off. I think it might have been actually been a yeah a couple that dropped it off, along with you know um, the actual later on with the um, glossy covers, um, sc stuff like this. Oh. Right. It's got uh, it's like, um, that one, Crowdbusters later on. So, now let me just get this out of here. But, like, now you said about 300. So, let me see if I can find uh, 280, 299. Do we have a 300? No, a jump. So, there's a jump here from 299 to 311. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, if you look, th this is the thing about these covers. I mean, like, you got the mean arena. All right. So, this is um, this is 279. 
And there were like, this is like goes 18 P and then goes up to 20 P. Right. So look at the price on these things. That's like 18, what was it like? About 60 cents New Zealand or something like that back in the day. And so, you know, you've got, who's this one here? Strat Stratium? No, who's this guy? This is, um, oh, that's Thug. Is this Thug. That's, Thug is their uh, main sort of, uh, edit editor, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let me see. There's some other ones there. Oh, here we go. Strotium. Strotium dog. Now, they've been trying to get these um, off the ground as a movie and as a TV shows and stuff like that forever. So, the Strotium dog there. And they've had, because of the amazing world building that they have, and of course, the brilliant man himself. Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd. Yeah, sitting on a seat of judgment. Uh, that's from 1989, and that's uh, 25p, and this is the best of, and 1987. So, where are we? That one there, just from before. But, um, so apart from the covers and stuff, what made you get uh, to start reading this series? Oh, look, man, uh, growing up in Morewa, how do I put it? I lived in my head. I yeah. was always stuck in my imagination and daydreaming about things. And it was always sci-fi and robots and fantastic future weaponry and stuff like that. And uh, when I first picked up a copy of um, 2000 AD, the first strip that took me was Rogue Trooper. Yeah. With Duncan Jones' uh, women to be making a movie of. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, you go ahead. Oh, no, no. So, so you talk about they're going to make a movie of the Rogue Trooper, you were saying? Yeah, there's been a few uh, little few news bits popping out over the last year or so. Duncan Jones has um, confirmed that he's working on a script, and I think the last time, must be September last year or something, there was a, an announcement that he reckons the uh, script is coming along quite nicely. I'm mm. stoked to hear it. I'm, I'm really... I reckon it'll translate very well to movies. Well, um... I found it. Now, I was going to talk about this logo, right? I actually had this logo done on a leather vest when I moved to Auckland. Wow. So this is this is back in about 80, I think I was 16 years old. And I, I just started a job and um, I had a lady actually, I designed the logo on a white leather. This is an Otahuhu. And she had a um, machine, she was a machinist. I got the leather, um, I took the piece of leather, bought a little piece of leather, took it home, cut it out, took it back to her, and she put on a $50 vest. Now, the Black Powers had a person named Rogue. Now, my I didn't know that, but my co-worker who was Maori and was fam uh, family friends with them said, hey, um, I would like to buy that as a gift. So I actually ended up selling that for more than you know basically maybe about 80 or 50, probably a couple bucks more than it was that i paid for it but that logo i think made me get into logo design wow you know wow. because I, it was my one of my first ones because also the other thing with megadeth and stuff like that right but that was the first logo i actually cut up and put onto something and Rogue trooper this is a fantastic story, but one of the other stories, do you remember Alan Moore? And he wrote um, yeah, about a female, yeah. a female character, and it's just not coming in my head right now. Sorry? The Ballad of Halo Jones. Halo Jones. Yes, Halo Jones. One of the, you know, he never got to finish it, but one of the amazing female, true female characters, apart from Judge Anderson, right, that we saw in Dread Treaty. Very well-rounded, very well-developed female character in a sci-fi series full of guys, full of mutants, full of all these, uh, you know, uh, mechanicals and mechs and all these different things. But it's such a amazing character to read and a series to read. And I wish that he would just finish it, you know, so we can, because he's, got, he's been talking about finishing it forever. Um, but so... You know, everybody knows Judge Dredd, 
it's like I mean, there's been uh, Sylvester Stallone back in early late um, nine eighties, uh, and then now we recently with Carl Urban. The amazing thing was to have one of our Kiwi guys be Judge Dredd and actually pull it off without taking his freaking helmet off, without yeah. being you know because everybody in in, in in entertainment wants their face to be seen, and to have someone actually love it enough not to show their face was amazing and i think that's what made everybody love it more yeah the thing that i thought was so cool about that was the press that he did afterwards um, it doesn't matter how long it takes if they do a sequel to this i'm there i want the role yeah. i love i love this character i believe in this character i'll wait i mean how can you not love this character he's like everything you don't want but you want you know, he's like anti-hero. He's like a total vigilante villain. Yet, he lives in a fascist society where, you know, the judges are the law. They control everything. You can't litter, right? You can go to jail, Isaac Cube, for littering, you know, or stealing food. Even if you're starving, you're still not allowed to do it. So, um, what, you know, we, we used to... we. You started a club. I mean, the two of us started a club called the ABC Warriors. Now, I didn't really understand the ABC Warriors. This is the weird thing about being an eight-year-old kid, nine-year-old kid, coming into something like as amazing worlds of the 2080 characters, not actually understanding these characters. Yet, um, we, you know, you got me enthused about it enough to that we built our own little um, ABC Warriors hut on a tree you know that we ran around being the abc warriors so tell us about the abc warriors who were they and you know well, for me it was that um the first appeal was that they were robots for starters mm -hmm. amazing weaponry um but each member had this uh had its own backstory it, it seemed as though it was well planned out uh they didn't just throw these characters together and just say, right, this is what's going on. They had their own dynamic going. Mm. Um, <clears throat> he had as the leader of the group, he had Hammerstein, and he was, uh, you know, the, the perfect soldier, so to speak. He was always going to uh, follow orders and do the right thing and, you know, morals and all that sort of thing. And uh, the rest of the characters that were assembled with him were a real gang of misf misfits. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was if you didn't really like the main character there were all these additional characters i guess you could say that uh mm -hmm. were going to put different shades different color different uh perspectives and different um trajectories of their own story uh into it you know you had in the squad you had a guy that was um a robot that was a uh, an ex vulgan i think he was a commander or something no general general blackblood you know, and he was the guy throughout the whole thing, much like, you know, to coin a phrase from somewhere else, like Blake Seven. You had yeah. Rob Blake, and then you had Avon, and the two of them were like at each other's, other's throats and exact opposites of each other. There you go, man. Um, Black Blood was the enemy. He resented yeah. this time. And that plays out even after I stopped reading 2000 AD. I went back a few years ago and decided I'd, I'd catch up. Yeah, and uh, Black Blood still being a a dirty, dishonest uh, double crosser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there were a lot of that um, characters in there. If you grew a bit tired of one character, you could uh, latch on to some of the uh, qualities of the other characters. It, it was just the depth of the storytelling that was there as well, and the fact that there was this huge backstory and it was connected within the same universe. To yeah. other stories, Nemesis for Warlock, for example, yeah. all those sorts of things, Robusters. Yeah. Now, let me see. Is Robusters, that's the one with the. Uh, it's got a robot, robot um, cigarette. Is it that one? Oh, it's like. Um, no, no, no. That was Robo Hunter. That was Sam Slade. Sam Slade. Right. So, didn't I pull that up before? Yeah, it, it yeah, so my like this is just a little while ago, like about 2014, before the whole um vaping kicked off, right? And my uncle had that exact design of this of uh, what's a character? Um, 
what's what's um robo hunters um that um robot stogie i think i think it's stogie Sto stogie and i and i and I, I said to my uncle i said that's a stogie this is what stogie looks like and it looked exactly like from 2000 ad so this vape machines they bring out now they look exactly like from 2000 ideas like maybe the guy who read it right design you know maybe way back then look his childhood designed this vape thing to work like that it's like you know this is the thing with technology that a lot of what we have in science fiction we've brought into reality because of the ideas that the creators of these um and a lot of them are futuristic right um do you which brings me to that um there was a movie called loader or looper looper, looper. do you remember looper yeah now in looper someone goes in back in time to kill someone it turns out to be hit him right do you remember the future shocks oh yeah right alan moore did a whole bunch of future shocks and and it's like when i saw looper i was like this is a freaking 2080 future shock story where he basically goes back in time to kill himself because they want to get rid of him so like oh you have to go around this corner you know spoiling the stories you know for those who haven't read it you have to go around this corner that's precise time and you're not about to say anything that person there you have to kill him right yeah. and they make a huge big story film like Lupa, which is exactly the same except it's a son or something it's like his younger self or something and a lot of and it's amazing to see that a lot of these things transpire in, into our world now because i mean you look at um what was it um chopper right and you look at back, back to the future with the hovercraft sport so uh back to the future came in around about 85 84 something like that yeah, yeah. And I think Chopper came out a, a couple of years earlier, and Chopper is an Australian character that they wrote, wasn't he? So no, he's, no, no, he was American. He's American, but he ended it's up like, going to Oz. Escaped right, that he won. Yeah. So for those of you guys who don't know, Ch um, Chopper was, was like a um, a hero, and he used to run around on a, ho a hover um, surfboard. And I love Chopper. It was just a, this is the great thing about all these 2080 stories. There's so many of them in there, you know. There's so many different things. So you've got um, a hover chair, <laughs> right? And you got you got your you got your 2080. You've got you've got all your um, you know you've got sorry you've got your um, your you got your Judge Dredd, so, um, Judge Anderson. You've got all your different Judge uh, Hershey. You've got all these different judges, but in that world, like you're saying, all these individual characters have their own well crafted backstories and characters and the, the thing was that they would bring, each story would be like eight pages and go on forever and ever and a little you know or six pages sorry and a little tiny you know paper um uh, paper newsprint um most inside mostly black and white right and you know you think that you know you only people would only read um color things we're so used to color now but like a lot of what I'm doing is black and white, but you, um, you know, usually just a cover, you know, just a cover was um, in color, and the back cover, and that's it, and the rest would be just um, just carries on black and white. Now they used to collect them in um, these into two thousand um, into magazines, into magazines. So can, do you, can you tell us a bit about the magazines or mega magazines? Yeah. I think that's a little bit after I stopped reading them. Um, around my time, they had the best of 2000 AD. And um, mm. if I remember correctly, they weren't dedicated just to one character. Yeah. I, I don't think it was just one strip. If I remember correctly, it, was, it, it would be two or three different strips. But it would be like a compilation or a compendium of um, a certain um. amount. There you go. Yeah, so this is this is Chopper here, guys. Classic Chopper, you know. And so this is the class. Uh, this is a collection in 1997. So this is this is when I I stopped reading these things because I think I stopped reading um, uh, about 89, 
and I moved on to, when I moved to Auckland, I was still reading them. I was getting collecting them. I had money of my own so I could buy them. But I, then I moved on to X-Men and stuff. But I've been reading 2080 still. Like, I'll go through, like, I'll look at the list of, like, if you go to 2080 Wiki on Wikipedia, you'll see the list of all the different stories. So I'll go through and see, you know, oh, there's that six issues of that. I've got to read that volume and then go into the next lot. And... There are so many stories and they have so many artists that, and, um, you know, that have actually moved on to bigger things. But this is where they started, a lot of them. I mean, especially when you look at Alan Moore, or Garth Innes. Um, Cam Grant Kennedy. Moore, sorry? Cam Kennedy. What did he work on? He worked on Rogue Trooper. He did, did some work as well on Judge Dredd for a while there. Yep. Um, and I don't know where he went in the States, but uh, the story goes is that he was working for some publishing company in the States, and that's why he no longer worked on 2018. Hmm. Brett Ewins, um, gosh, who were the others? Wagner, Ian Wagner, yep. So you got um, John Wagner, uh, Carlos Esquira, yes, is it Carl? You know, the co-creator of Dread. He's the one who made Dread look like the way he does. Um, and Strontium and, Dog as well. Sorry? And Strontium Dog as well. Yeah. I mean, Strontium Dog. Let's talk about that one because, I mean, we haven't mentioned it, him yet. Yeah. I, to be honest with you, I didn't really get into it until I killed off Johnny Alpha. Hmm. <laughs> That's when it got interesting for me. Otherwise, it was pretty much episodic. Um, but, yeah, it was a bunch of mutants that... Uh, Ended up making their living uh, search and destroy. Uh, I think it was I think it's what the SD stood for, search and destroy or seek and destroy, or something like that. Anyway, as bounty hunters, and they all had these different mutations that made them uh, more more efficient than each other and or varied, all that sort of thing. You were talking about strong female characters. They had a breakout character from that. Uh, yeah, Durham Red. Yes, um, Durham, Durham, Durham Red is an amazing female character. And it's, I mean, you, you're going back in the 80s, right? Everybody's talking about the 90s, or the, uh, like now, 2020. Those got the greatest char female characters. We're going to back to the 80s, and Durham Red is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, just, I mean, there's, I mean, you've got Durham Red, you've got, uh, we mentioned uh, uh, Judge uh, Anderson, uh, and who is a Alan Moore character? I always forget a name. Oh, Halo Jones. Halo Jones. Three amazing characters. And also the simp. Do you remember the simp? Char uh, there's like um, D simp detective or something like that. Yeah. And I, I've, been, I've been reading those stories and it's came in, some of them came in later and it's just, some of them are just amazing, amazing stories. And I think, for me, you know, there's not, you can't, um, I think this one here is Robo Hunter. Is that Robo Hunter? Yep. Yeah. So him and a Stoogie. Um, I can't see Stoogie here, but, um, you know, the artwork on, in these books uh, uh, is like the total opposite of anything that was happening at the same time in DC and Marvel. Right, because of the 1950s and 70s, they got rid of anything that wasn't superheroes because they wanted to go clean. They wanted to be a um, a politically correct comic book, uh, you know, Western comic book situation. Whereas you, right next to it, was this totally non political you know, unpolitical as possible political books called 2000 AD, full of fascism, full of mutants, full of people. Uh, having like fatty fights, right? You know, like they're like, how much food can you stuff in yourself? And you get paid to stuff yourself, and people watch you having these things. And you'd be thinking, oh, there was one that was banned in uh, America, and um, which had to be pulled, which was like, um, I think Burger King versus uh, uh, McDonald's. They had a huge thing, controversy around that, where they'd be censored it. And so these guys basically could do whatever they wanted. And recently I've learned that only British 
uh, UK people are allowed to write and work for 2000 AD. And um, which is kind of unique in its way because it gives everybody in England a start in comics in a fresh and unique way. Because I think if you, I mean, if you look at the work here, like this is Roy Trooper, right? Look at the detail on this thing. Absolutely. That, is that Johnny Alpha? Oh, no, sorry, Rogue Trooper. Sorry, my bad. Rogue Trooper, yeah. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, if um, if you're into gaming at all, that PlayStation game that they came out with, um, they recently revamped it. Uh, Rogue Trooper Redo, the one that came out. Was okay. Three, yeah. Man, brilliant. Very faithful to the, the story. Um, obviously, some things had to be changed up, but it's not in the same way that uh, they had to change things for that 1995 Sylvester Stallone Dread movie. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth getting. Uh, so it was Rogue Trooper. Rogue Trooper Redo. But basically what they did is they just remastered a game that they put out. Ooh, I thought it was 2006. But uh, it's on PlayStation, yeah, 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 yeah. So they uh remastered it, so to speak, and added a few uh tweaks, and then they put it out again for PS4. Hmm. And that's a real treat, that game. That's fantastic. That really took me back to my childhood. Is it on PlayStation 1 or 2? I think, I think the original was on PlayStation 2, and the remastered version was issued on PS4. Okay. Because um, my dad gave me a PlayStation. Wow. With a whole bunch of games. He's, he had a clean out and said, oh, do you want those? I'm going, yep, I'll take them all. And um, because I never owned a PlayStation of my own, because I've never had a console until about um, 2014 when I bought my Xbox. And then I could, couldn't play it. It's been sitting with my nephew and nieces. And then at Christmas, they went to a PS4. I got my Xbox back. So... Or Xbox One, you know, don't Xbox. Yeah. So now I have an Xbox 360, and I have a PlayStation, which I haven't played yet. Don't have any too much, too busy. So, um, what are this? What are some other breakout characters, um, 2080 characters that you enjoyed reading? Oh, um, there was a series that started out. Well, you talk, you were talking about series that weren't finished. I don't know whether it was really finished, but there was a, a series called Mean Team. And that started out great. And then unfortunately, it just seemed to trickle off. And it's almost as though... Well, I, I feel that Kevin O'Neill did the same thing with Nemesis. Just kind of got yep. a bit with everything and just decided, eh, let's wrap it up in a weak way. Um, man, that's, that's probably quite a controversial way to put it. But uh, <laughs> it, it just seemed to not be as inspired as it was at the start. It started out as a great idea. Another one that was like that was Bad Company. Um, now, I'm hearing yeah. stories that uh, Bad Company had come back. Uh, somebody, I don't know if it was the original owner of the intellectual property or what, but uh, they revamped it. They brought back Bad Company. I don't know if it was a retelling or whatever, but uh, you know that was a really cool series. Um, they did a breakout of one of the characters in that, and um, it was really dark, really dark. It didn't end well. Um, of course, going back to Dread, Chopper having his own series yep. was fantastic. Um, what else is there? Anderson having her own series, really strong female character, unlike the, the cadet Anderson in the Dread 3D movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dark Judges, man, they were cool. Oh, dude, dude. You know, you, you, you like that was the most one of the most craziest things is the judges, right? Um, like these aliens, it's like a, it wasn't a, 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 like a parallel world they broke out of and yeah. entered our world, parallel dimension, yeah, yeah. So that you had like a uh, death, Judge Death, Judge um, Mortis, Mortis, yep. So Fear, um, death. So you had Judge Death, um, Mortis. Judge what was the other one? 
Waters, Judge Fire. Yeah, Waters and Fire and um, what I'm oh, and Death, of course. The Dark Judges. Um, so tell us about a bit about them. Do you remember? Oh man, it's funny because some of the stuff that I heard after I stopped collecting, it made it sound like the story went even deeper. Oh man, it's been years. From what I understand, um, Judge Death was uh, this psychotic kind of child that um, he was seriously warped mm. and he caused this whole revolution in his world where they deemed that uh, the crime, the biggest crime was living. And so that's yeah. like purged the, their whole world, I suppose you could call it, of life. Um, but I was hearing all sorts of things that added more and more to the pile and, and more and more depth, like, you know, there were some sisters and there were some children. Of, of yeah, the, uh, the, um, the Dark Sisters. Dark Sisters, there you go. Yeah. Hey, it looks like um, I just realized I got two copies of one, so I'm going to have to give you one of these. Cool, man. So this is number four, uh, two, um, 345. Wow. 83, December 3rd, 83. So I'll put one aside for you. Because um, I haven't had a look through these. Like, I just put them in a plastic bag and put it away. Now, I pulled out something I was going to show. One of the most classic lines ever. Before we move on to another one, I've got. Yeah. Every time I see I'm the law, I always think of Sylvester Stallone. I'm the law. Yeah. And not only that, but of course, the classic Anthrax song, I'm the law. Judge it. Oh, yeah, man. Dreaders. Dreaders the law. Now, check out this cover. This is like from. Um, Nine, um, 1982 August 7th now they have like like a weekly date because these used to come out weekly a baby with a gun <laughs> yeah. imagine that on an American comic and a controversy right and that's Robo Hunter at the back yeah yep that's Robo Hunter in the back and in the middle one of the things is like in the middle they actually um, they have a uh, middle page spread where it's actually in color. So this is judge. Um, this is fungus. I think I've read the story recently. But the other thing is, before I move on to this big one, Sister Sledge. Oops, sorry, it's not seen that Story somehow. Now that's Brett Ewan who drew that. Greg Ewan. Brett Ewan's. Brett Ewan. I mean, he was suffering some serious yep. mental issues. Yeah, Brett Ewens uh, did the Rogue Troopers. Yeah. Uh, ro uh, robot. All right, so now we're going to go on to one of my all-time favorites. And uh, this, they've just released a collection and a hardcover. <laughs> Try and pronounce it. Slade. No, it's not. How do you say it? I had someone uh, a few years ago, I showed them how that name was written and they went, oh, it's pronounced something, something similar to Slornia. Slornia? Something like that. And I thought, hey, is, Gaelic, is it Gaelic? Gaelic, yeah. Yeah, check out this amazing artwork on that where he's going off against a, uh, a mythical dragon, um, or was it a lizard? Kill Slane, kill Slane. And this, this is all in the 80s on the cover of a, you know, of a magazine, uh, you know, of a children's, you know, teen uh, comic book that, you know, that Americans weren't going to be able to see all this sort of stuff on theirs because they're all flying around in their little uh, capes, which I have nothing against because I'm really, you know, I love that stuff. But, you know, you got amazing artwork like this on a rogue trooper and um where are we and of course dread on his amazing bike 
Lawgiver. No, yeah. Lawmaster, sorry. Lawgiver was his gun. That's right. He, oh, I almost got confused there myself. Um, what else? Let me just see what else we got here. Um, right, so this is the magazines we were talking about before, where they like collect the stories uh, like uh, about you know, like, uh, because they used to do it about six pages of a story on a weekly basis, then they would collect a whole bunch of them and put them into a magazine. And the magazine used, would, and this is America too. The America story is a really good story. Uh, do you remember America? No. This is, yeah, it came out around about late 80s, uh, 2000, I'm sorry, 1990s. And this one is from... 1996 so america 2 came out in 1996 so it's one of the well it says here the sequel to dread's greatest saga so yeah so america is a good uh, it's really good but talking about america they also did like um aliens versus predator versus dread versus uh batman batman yeah i mean that was one of the classic crossovers into american uh you know superhero comics and it actually worked, you know, and I'm not sure who wrote it, but it actually worked. And it was a good, good story. Um, now, we talk about robots and stuff, you know, you with your, you know, you're liking your Max and stuff. A robot horse with um, Robo Hunter on the cover. Yeah. Die, Nave. And that's from 48 Cents, New Zealand. 16 that's insane isn't it 48 cents dude man we could have got a big huge bag of lollies for that yeah and 16p so yeah uh was a, a pound was basically three dollars new zealand wasn't it or was it four dollars almost new zealand at that time because the pound was really strong in those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. this is this came out two weeks after my birthday in '82. So I would have probably read this somehow because I borrowed it off you, of course. I never had my own copies of these. So that's how you know that's how we connected with these comic books. So this is that's only a couple of weeks away. So this is from May twenty nine. 82 yeah so that month they were running the whole robo hunter um robo hunter series so 48 cents okay so now i'm going to go into these collections so they used to put out these collections as well like a weekly they used to do them uh, is it dailies like red dailies in the newspapers and um, so they'd arrange them like that oh, in the wow. collection. So sideways, and they'd clip it all up to. I, I think this is from the newspapers. So they'd do like um, little, you know, arrange them for the newspapers that way. And you get, you know, sh very quick little stories or some ongoing stories for the daily. So this is from uh, one pound twenty-five New Zealand, three dollars seventy-four cents, including GST. So look at that. <laughs> yeah. And then on the back, of course, is the lawgiver. Tells you exactly what it does, where it does it. You know, the command you got to give it or it won't fire. And it's it's thing to your, your, what's it, your DNA matrix or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, this is worth around $25 now or more. And, um, but back then it was three dollars seventy four cents, um, and also the the um, is it quality? I think it might be no, Fleetway. Of course, Fleetway is the company that owns them. If I remember right, I think it's Fleetway and Quality in America used to put them out. So this is um, this is like there's four in this volume, and uh, it's not for sale in um, um, Great Britain. So it's only was sold outside of Great Britain of wow. England. So, yeah, the crime file, Judge Dredd's crime file. But check out the artwork in this. It's just, whoops. And, uh, and it's in color. 
trade paperbacks specially made for American markets and overseas markets. Not newsprint. Uh, now I've got a, a couple others. So we're talking about before I move on to something else, but so there's um, one, two, three volumes. I'm not sure how many volumes of this is in the series, but where are we? This is the Road Trooper series. Volume one. Yeah. And you got volume two. That's a cool cover. It's an awesome cover, right? It's got his helmet off. He hardly ever has his helmet off. And these are in black and white. So they're straight out of the out of the series, um, weekly series, put together as a trade paperback. So, you know, these go back a while. Um, this is 1988. Titan Books put it out. Um, way back when, you know, 88. Man, that's a long time ago. I was only about 13. No, 15. Um, right. So there's that. But then also, there's Judge Jet 3. Check out this cover. And, you know, Dread's not even the main main thing on the cover. It's in the back. <laughs> you know, and you got this this mutant on the front as the main, you know, main focus point. And Dread's just looking around at the back. Yeah. And then you have this classic block mania. John Wagner, Mike McC McMahon, and Ron Smith. The block mania stories were amazing. Like gangs, you know, just going at it. Each, each block having their own basically their own mafia and just the whole setup, the rules of the game. Now talking, segue, talking about games. Ah, did you ever see this? No, no, it probably came out after I stopped reading those comics. Yeah, it's, um, these are all part of the pack that I got from this gentleman, like a banana box of all these, like hard covers, you know, um, soft cover, soft cover trades, paperbacks, uh, magazines, uh, collections, and weeklies, and they detail all this stuff about the characters. Man, and you know, it's like it's a role playing game. Right? This is when role playing games were big. This is before. This is around about when D and D was just getting started. And so you had your tabletop sort of um, designing your own games and stuff. So this is weird because, like, um, it's got yellow pages, but it's also got this. Uh, it's like a block, like a design of a block and tape on uh, the map and stuff. And then you've got your characters, character sheets. And I think you're supposed to cut these out or something. But, um, you know, I'm never going to do that, of course. But, you know, it's just all these different. Um, you got Dread, you got the bike. And I have no idea how to play this thing. And I've never played it. So, but, you know, it's it's filled with all this information. Uh, you got the Game Master's book. Um, has, you know, basically the way you'd play like um, Werewolf. Is it the Werewolf games that just come out? Um, that I reckon that was um, that um, the movie Underworld took off from, you know, the um, the role playing game. Okay, so oops, sorry, excuse me, I'm gonna knock my laptop off, sitting on some things there. Okay, so there's a couple more trades before I want to go to this. The Cursed Earth is going to come up soon, but so a couple more dread collections. Check out that chin, and that's um, you know that upside down smile. That's like smug, you know, that smug look he has. And, and, you know, Carl really did a good job on the way he just kept his no smiles, no nothing, just a frown, continuous, like, mean look, you know. And these covers, they're just amazing covers. You know, it's like the Barry Windsor Smith stuff, um, very detailed covers. And um, then you've got, uh, you know, like – Painted covers. Uh, and it reminds me of um, John Bolton, his style. And because John Bolton, before he, you know, he started doing stuff over um, over at DC and with Neil Gaiman, 
And he was, um, where are we? What if there's a cover in here? Um, this is by um, John Wagner and Alan Grant. Ah, yeah. and Alan Grant. Have Machine Angel in it as well. Sorry? That'll have Mean Machine Angel in it as well. That was another and, great character. Let's see. So, yeah. Is he done with the A or something? What is that? Like, yeah. It's got a little, yeah. And you got to like twist it and he gets like levels of violence and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So there's, this is uh, volume six. Oh, it's a bit of a glare there. I'm not sure. I think we, I can't, don't know where that's coming from, but you know, it's amazing sort of artwork on these covers alone. But of course, Is that the one we're talking about? Yep, absolutely. Yep, this is a big chunky one. This this is the mega history of Judge Dredd, the untold story. The arts by um Steve Mc, 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 McMahon, Mc, McMahon, McMahon, and um, I think that's Hershey, Judge Hershey the back. Yes. And becomes yes. Chief Hershey later on. So this is a very solid little um, book. Um, it's it's just full of information, and you know, just the covers. You've got like your Mac Mac One Dan Dare. Uh, well, you know, where are we? Um, the Lawgiver, like very different style. Of, whoops, sorry, helmets there. Look at that original, Look at that original. Very, different very different from the modern one. Yeah, one of the earlier ones, and and the different styles of bikes. I mean, like you look at this artwork here, this later artwork, and then you look at this other um, one. Whoops, just it's on my fingers. Sorry, my fingers. So you look at that, and then you see the newer um, painted work on that same design, and I think it's just. Uh, you know, talking about just death. Yep. Yep. You know, it's just, it's just such an amazing world of, um, do you remember Mac one? No, no. thank you. Yeah. I'm not sure what, what time he, um, he might've been an earlier character. Oh yeah, he was, he was um, in the very first prog. Hmm. Okay. So before, let me bring out a couple of very, very old ones. I, I, we're talking about it off um, air. I mean, uh, before. Uh, I have to make sure it's in the right folder. Nope, it's in the other one. Okay. Now, I, amongst all this, and this week, I had a, a guy came up to me and said he's got the number one. Wow. Right? And he was looking to find out how much it was worth and whether someone is willing to buy it. I put on, put them onto some people that I know who could, um, you know, who could set them right. But, um, and he, when he said number one, I said, I want to see what it looks like because you know, some people just go, yes, yeah, the first one because it's old and stuff. It's like, get me the, get me a photo of where the, you know, where the, where the price is, you know, the year and everything. And yes, he's got the number one. It's, this is, Remember how we were saying 18p and 20p? Yeah. This is 8p. <laughs> this is issue number six. All right. This is like, this is the year. It was 30 cents in New Zealand. And, he's, and the guy's already, you know, written it on the actual, you know, on the top here because people would just write the price on the top. Nobody really cared because comic books weren't meant to be saved. They were just supposed to read and chucked away. Disposable. So this is from Dateline, 2nd of April, 77, this month. What is that, like about 43 years ago this month? Choo -choo. Then in orbit every Saturday. So that's when it came out, every Saturday. Oh, talking about Mac 1. You're right. Right at the early ones. Yep. Yep. Right there. Top thrill. Mac 1. You know? I don't think just the first issue. Was he in the first issue? No. Hmm. 
so this is so you know nazis seem to be the new topic everybody calls everybody nazis to stop them from having an opinion so this one's here goes on the first it's got not number six it's got in 1977 nazis on the cover all right and it goes impossible the nazis have come back from the dead to fight mac one mac man for himmler's gold you know it's just the whole oh the other one do you remember the invasion stories yeah one of the, yeah. One of the longest one of the longest running stories eh? yeah so and i mean that leads on to so many other stories in the future for example abc warriors the bad yeah. guy are the volgans the yes invasion of Vulcan. i i it was my understanding that that was a way of um using pc to do a story about the russians yeah it's 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 i mean listen this i mean everybody's talking about like how you, you know there's politics and comics of course they've always been politics and comics this is how you'd actually put it out there you know you know you don't you, you put a bit of salt with it and sugar with it you don't just put salt 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 and um you always sweeten the sweet in the pie or the cake as they say so that's number six i think there was another one somewhere here there it is and oh another 8p and i have no idea what number this is can't really see that well. Prog number 20, 9th July 77. Wow. So now if if I remember right, they've kind of kept it the same size or if they've gone bigger. Let me just check in the size wise here. No. It's uh I think it might have been because it's flattened, it might have been bigger, but I think it looks like it's about the same size between you know uh 20 years 10 years later you know the same size then but check it out they've still this one's got solid tape holding it together you know someone really loved this it fell apart because i mean it's just kept it's newsprint kept together by staples two staples and so there's a beautiful dan dare splash page like spray uh, like two page spread and that's, um, I wonder if that's in the middle. Yeah, it's directly in the middle and rusted, you know, it's just a, such a, and it's not even like the thing is like, every, you know, there's a lot of people doing square and, um, you know, very uh, rectangular and um, Panel. panels. But now you look at this way back when in the seventies, they're already playing around with circular things. And this, this sort of things become very popular, especially um, in manga because I'm reading a lot of manga and you see a lot of more flow to the thing and you, you have a big, huge um, character standing there, but there'll be others. Yeah, that's Naruto. Goku. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not so... Uh, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, all the popular ones I actually haven't read, um, watched, sorry. I actually go for like anything that's maybe around about 24 episodes and less because then I can just quickly get the story and move on to the next one uh yeah, otherwise yeah. i have no patience i've got a friend who just who wants me to watch black, um, black clover yep. yep and i've gotten to about maybe 12 episodes and i'm like there's about what 50 or 100 more to go and i'm like nah i'm just gonna go and watch something else and um i actually watched um uh which i'm going to talk about some another time um a new well not actually new i think it came out in like uh 2005 called toe um orbital i think i might have put a um, thing on um on facebook orbit uh, elliptical orbit orbital or it's but on uh, the um american name for it's orbit orbit uh, orbital it's very good it's about it's a it's a cgi um science fiction story set on a spaceship and um a warehouse type spaceship in space it's like it's like a Amazon where they where they shoot off parcels. <laughs> That's it. It's like get ready, here comes another parcel. 
and and that's a ship so it's amazon in space and um uh, and that's i think that's the lot of oldest two that i have and but let's go move on to one of the uh, probably one of the best stories in the in the in the history of judge dread what's that cursed cursed, earth. the yeah. cursed earth now i'm gonna let you take over on this one well that's the thing i i don't know too much about the cursed earth story it wasn't a part of the judge child quest it's now this is written by uh pat mills yes john ragnar covers by uh brian bolland and mike mccann again for uh, the big boots the creator of the big boots in dread um you've got you know amazing amazing epic uh ep you know recognizable judge dread um covers this is when he you know he basically I, if i remember right he goes off into the cursed earth um is it big i think it's let me just make sure i got this right so there's a plague in mega city too and only judge dread can deliver the cure but first oh, plagues <laughs> it's been the theme of most of the books this um yeah i was just talking to um uh mike before about pandemic and stuff and his money land thing how did you know then a dome and they're stuck in the dome you know and they're locked in there and they have to learn how to survive in there and it's worth checking out the link i've got the link in the last video um so here we go so there's a plague in mega city too and only judge Dredd can deliver the cure but first he's got to go to he's got to cross the cursed earth the radiation ravaged wasteland that lies between the cities and although the land is barren it's far from abandoned so Brian Bolland, like we're talking about, Brian Bolland worked on Batman the Killing Joke. It's here somewhere. Um, and one of the classic Batman stories, uh, The Killing Joke. But it's this story is like such a, you know, they even gave it a friggin', you know, foil, hardcover foil um, slipcase. And let's see. Um, what issue did it come out in first? Sixty-one. There you go. There you go. Long issue sixty-one, nineteen seventy-eight. I wasn't even in New Zealand. <laughs> Didn't even know what it, what it, you know what uh, this was. So this one was printed in two thousand two, first edition. Beautiful hardcover. Um, yeah, I'm totally blessed to have this sort of stuff just handed over to me and you know just and she said well you can sell it you can do whatever you want i said well no i looked at a couple of them it's like i can sell the trades but some other ones i won't but there is i mean the the world of 2080 is so amazing the whole structure of it and even when they were doing the the new dread td and um, 3d because they're looking at doing a, a mega city one tv series at, at the moment have you heard about that yeah 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 but, yeah i mean i mean there's they were saying that they wanted um i was getting the boys to do and um and he's also you know probably got a couple more movies to do now, now that because you know he's um after judge dread i mean dread treaty and so let's pull this up on uh, mega city if it'll come up and hit you want and was like they all work with the um you know it fallen through and you know they were going to decide whether it's going to happen or not and they were going to wait for him so yeah it's weird because i, I would have thought that they're like um because doing a series right everybody is going to streaming now doing it to deal with um to deal with um 
the whole universe of the mega cities and you could slowly introduce all the other different um characters into it and go into the uh, facets you can i mean the judge dread character alone is you know you got from what is it like 40 almost 50 years of stories to go on with Absolutely. and he's, he's i think he's, he's probably appeared in every single issue apart from the first couple mm. yeah i thought it was something like the first 60 progs mm. there was no dread and then all of a sudden there's Quera and uh who else was it who was writing it then wagner wasn't it i think you might be right Square and wagner was um I think it was um i think it was square yeah yeah no it was john wagner and um carlos a square up carlos being the art um i think yeah both of them co-creators um wagner being the writer and a square being the artist but just you know like it's an entire world and this is the thing about 2000 ad the the universe they even you know they have planets that are part of this world you know where they send the judges to the judge the plant uh right the yeah. sorry carol yeah so they had a prison planet uh a prison moon i should say a colony on on the moon of titan and yeah where, titan yeah dread's brother rico was sent to hmm. We actually have a friend named Rico, <laughs> so we'll probably call him Dread. Uh, we'll, my, my con Judge Judge Rico. Yeah, we'll nickname Judge Rico. But this, 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 I think there's a story I was reading recently. Uh, well, recently meaning about 2018, uh, where about Titan, how they're trying to escape Titan, and uh, we you mentioned uh, we were talking about Blake Seven earlier. Now, just a side thing how much you know you did you, i don't remember re watching blake seven so much as a kid but i remember um some of it because it used to be on tv here did you watch it on tv when it was here oh what, yeah what? man anything science fiction i watched um it ended with a really abrupt ending really open-ended hmm. so I found, I found this a few years ago and i was like yeah i'm on that but I, I i watched the first issue of it now you can basically watch it online now because everything that's old like that is available uh i think on youtube or something and um because it's, it's based I've sorry carry on i've got to interject with this it's just popped into my brain just now a few years ago somebody uploaded to youtube um might have been rebellion publishing themselves but they uh crowdfunded a movie called called future shocks story of 2018 um i watched it on youtube yeah and it was about two hours of how they came up with the comic um the trials and tribulations they went through the mismanagement of the 19th era um mm -hmm. and, and the double o's yeah i remember watching that as well because yeah I, um what was, uh, what was it like the history of 2080 something like yeah. that excellent excellent documentary and a really good social commentary at the time um yeah there's the shot um you got the trailer let me just find it do that do that where was the rest of it was a big one There is like there's this one here called um, Ten Years of 2000 AD. Let me see. Well, this was about two hours long. It was called Future Shock. Yeah, it's got the trailers here, but I'm trying to find the. Uh, you can buy and rent it now. It's got a thing here. Um, now there's a lot of um, fan films uh the, the, oh, this is the one you're talking about the rogue trooper game so there's this um beautiful um fb 
I'm not sure um, sequence of it. So there's that one. Um, but Linda Elephant, because it's available right now for those, you know, through YouTube for streaming, for those who are interested to watch it that way. Um, but yeah, I think anybody, like, I mean, for me, because I'm, I'm making comics now, creating worlds now, I like to watch these documentaries. Like, you know, I, was, I talk about image, image comics and how. I actually planned out our plunge universe and our plunge company enterprises like image comics that there would be four of us that um that there'll be that this is their job this person's this person's this person's this person's job and we'd you know work around how we're going to do that but lessons you know anybody who wants to work on comics has to and I always go, you got to go look at the history of stuff and look at how people did things, mistakes they made and learn from them. And you look at this amazing work that these people have done to, and, you know, moved on to some moved on to better things. Some have gone back, you know, Pat Mills. I saw a Pat Mills book here somewhere before, um, you know, and Peter Milligan, you know, went off to work for Hell, um, Hellblazer. Uh, Garth Innes, all these great uh, people, you know, went off to make bigger names at, um, I guess, with Vertigo into the American market. But they all got their start, you know, and in, um, in 2018 because it was, it's, it's, you know, it's one of the most iconic top tier comic series stories in the world, which isn't capes right which there's no capes there's no mask as such apart from the helmets and there's no people flying around apart from chopper on his hovercrafts and stuff like that um and then you got mutants and before i guess without the powers they're just mutants you know um hated as such and they're like second class citizens or third class even uh thrown off into the cursed earth if you're if you accidentally born that way or so forth. but it's a universe of real characters doing real things and humans behaving like humans but they have all these different fashions and and i was talking you know we were talking to mike before about character building and he's saying if it if it does if it doesn't read well when you're reading it out loud there's no point putting it in there and he's talking about also talking about character developing and you look at what they've done with um you know joe dread over all these years 40 years of writing him and he's still the same hard hard as nails person right he is the law there's no changing him i think there was one time he softened up a bit but he just went straight back to it you know and uh, i think that was when um one of the judges went nuts i can't remember who it was um Caligula. and he sorry judge Caligula. Yeah, there was that one, but then there was the, I think it might have been, might have been after the story of, um, I think when the Russians tried to um, blow up or let off a virus in Mega City as a revenge sort of thing, and they shut up, they just fully become like total fascists, like lock everybody up, just like full on, and it's like block war, it's like a, World War Three, I think, it was something like that. It was like mega war, or something like that, and there was just like the close up to everything. Now, what are you some of your favorite stories out of that? I mean, we talk about so many different ones, but what sticks in your mind when you think about what's the one thing? Oh man, um, the ones that leap to mind. I mentioned Bad Company earlier. I thought that was great. Mm. Uh, Nemesis, certain parts of Nemesis were great. The ABC Warriors was just fantastic yeah. and epic. Rogue Trooper, epic to a point until it seems as though they dropped the ball. Mm. And that, I, that's, that really started my turn away from 2000 AD. And okay, I picked up an instrument instead rather than re picking up a comic, you know? Yeah. Um, but the Dread storyline that I really enjoyed, one of the sagas that he was a part of was uh, City of the Damned. Okay. That was a sequel to the Judge Child Quest. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. Let me just, um, but yes, let me grab that up. 
So, City of the Damned. Mm. I wonder if I heard that one. I just remember as a kid, it was really right. Fred lost his eyes. Right. So check this out, right? So that's, that was from like 392 to 406. It was written by John Wagner and Grant, Alan Grant, illustrated by Steve Dillon. Yeah. Now, Steve, yeah. Dillon, Steve Dillon went on to do, if I'm, if I'm right, let me check my little list here. Of this. Yep. He went on to do artwork on Preacher with Garth Ennis. He passed away, I think, about two years ago before before Preacher became, a, I think, before Preacher was made. And, right. you know, this is one of the most epic, you know, two... Oh, I think um, Garth is Irish, so I won't say two Englishmen. But, you know, so, yeah. And we know the theories and stuff. So, I mean, the artwork, you know, would be fantastic. If, you know, if you've got Steve Dillon doing the covers or, you know, on Judge Dredd stuff. Um, what number was that again? Let me see if I've got any of that. I think I might be out of my um, list. Was it 393? 406. Yeah, 393 and 406. Um, let me see. City of the Dam. Uh, 84 to 84. Uh, where is the plot? Premise. The story begins with a prologue set in 2107, which was the present day in the Judge Dredd strip at that time. Scientists have just built the first ever time machine called Proteus, which has been successful in short range tests, journeys of hours or days. So Chief Judge Magruder orders Judge Dredd and Anderson to use it to go to go to go 13 years into the future to investigate a prophecy that Mary City 1 will be destroyed in the year 2120. Mm. This prophecy made by a dying side judge in 2102 was first mentioned in the earlier story The Judge Child. It foretells a story a city it foretells that the city will be destroyed unless Owen Chrysler also known as the Judge Child rules the city since only he can save the city from disaster. In that earlier story, however, J Dredd decided that Chrysler was too evil to be allowed to rule the city and left him behind on the planet Xanadu. In 2104, Chrysler tried to kill Dredd in revenge and Magruder orders his execution. Without the city's prophesied um, savior, Mag Magruder now wants to find an alternative solution and sends Judge, Anders um, sorry, Judge Dredd and Anderson to gather intelligence. So that's that's I mean that's a pretty huge <laughs> huge outline for a story. You got a time machine, you got a prophecy, you got a judge child, you got a villain, and now the villain's supposed to save you, now the villain's gotta be killed, now you gotta go back and do something else. It's kind of like um, do you kill do you kill Hitler? Or do you kill baby Hitler story, right? It's basically that. Is that what you think? I mean, is that how you feel about the story? Was it like that? Not really, because for me, jumping on board from Prague 300 onwards, mm. I'd heard all of this, you know, the stories of um, Flesh, the dinosaur ones, and uh, Savage, and Invasion, and all of these things that I hadn't read firsthand, so you kind of fill in the blanks, mm. and then all of a sudden you have the saga that gives you a bit of a, a link back, 200 yeah. show, show issues, and goes... Remember this Judge Child quest that you've heard all about? We're bringing this guy back. Yeah. And I thought, ooh, and it just it created more and more intrigue. Also, the fact that it was extremely dark. Dread yeah. lost his eyes. So he's going around with the blood coming out of the sockets of his helmet, so to mm. speak, through his helmet. Uh, Hershey's turned into a vampire. There's all these things where you sit there and you go, oh, man, all your friends and all the people that are going to help you on your quest He's you know, falling to the wayside, going nuts, or yeah. becoming vampires. Um, what else? Um, lost my train of thought there. Um, that's it. 
Back issues. So you started at 300. Were you ever able to go back and get some back issues? No. Um, I managed to fill in those blanks because, as I mentioned, Rogue Trooper was my favorite. I started yep. at Prog 300, and I believe Rogue Trooper's first appearance was Prog 224, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to wait for the best of 2018 monthly to be reissued. I right. Tweeted. And when that came out every month, oh, here we go. Here's some old stories I can fill in those blanks. Yep. Um, in those days, you either brought back issues through Forbidden Planet over in Scotland by mail order, and it took yep. three months by surface mail to get there. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, uh, good times, good times. Or um, I dealt with a place called Mark One Comics and Games that was based here in Auckland. Yeah. Um, I used to visit that when I used to yeah. live in Auckland in, in the late 80s and early 90s. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember when they were in the finance plaza, weren't they? Uh, they were downstairs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I remember they were down the steps yeah. and it was a huge place. You'd never think a comic book store could be that big in New Zealand. And then they moved to Lawn Street. Yeah. And then they and, shut uh, down. That was it? Yeah, well, Mark, yeah. So Mark One was a franchise, so they had several stores through New Zealand, and then they went into private um, uh, franchises. Of the owners of them bought them out. So there was one in Invercargill. So there's Mark One up in Hamilton, and then there's um, there was Mark One. Uh, is that on High Street? Lawn Street, the next one along. Right. Yeah. It's funny you mention that because uh, Hamilton is where it originated from, wasn't it? It was a brother and sister that started it, Mark and Tanya Paul. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know much of the history of that, but I mean, Mark one was where I got into X-Men with the Chris Claremont stories and I'm old John, I'm John Byrne. And those are stories that stick in my head forever. If, if anybody says what um, X-Men stories should I read, go read that. Don't bother with anything new. Don't bother with anything else. Get the, um, get that um, Dark Phoenix saga, get the friggin' uh, Forge. You know, building the, you know, building the old, um, uh, what's it, um, gosh, sorry, bro, right? Building all their X wings, building all that stuff. You know, how do they get all that technology? Well, because he knew, he knew how to build it all. Uh, Storm comes in. You know, she's a slave. Um, sorry, she's a, a, a starving child somewhere. Gets, you know, her powers turn on, and she comes to America. You know, and then there's a star jammers and all that. That that age, late eighties and very early nineties, nothing can beat those that age of X Men comics ever. Nobody's touched it. Everybody tries, but you know, nobody can touch what beautiful. It's like this, like you, you know, it's like you you trying to re you you be trying to rewrite the history of uh, Judge Dredd to to placate what's happening now. It's like don't even bother, you know, right. because if you do that, you lose everything that Dredd is about. And I think the beauty of Dredd is that you don't like him because he's not a good guy. You like him because he just sticks to his rules, right? And even though you can say, well, dude, that's going too far, but you know the world he lives in. You know, he, there could be somebody just about to let off a bomb. And if, you know, and so they've got to keep all these people under their thumb and then you wonder, well, if you keep people like under your thumb all the time, of course they're going to let off bombs, let off steam. Communism, right? Fascism. So you got a whole universe of fascist lawgivers. But even in that, you see so much humanity. Like you look at Judge Anderson, right? And it's a cl classic example of Judge, Judge Anderson where she's be able to empathize and profess, you know, uh, uh, be able to see... Um, yeah, let's talk about that psychic powers because we haven't talked about we've talked about the mutants and all this and aliens and all that. But let's talk, what about psychic powers of this thing? Because I know that um, um, who was it? I think it was um, I think it might have been PK Dick or who's the other guy that out of America psycho that um, Babylon Five like Babylon Five uses a psycho right? So um, and you had Alfred Bester and which was. Uh, Walter Koenig from Star, Star Trek. Right. And so when you look at, because I know um, Alfred Bester 
Alfred Bester was a guy who, who did the whole thing about psychic powers. And that's why Koenig was named um, Bester in the uh, Babylon 5 series, because J.M. Um, JM, JM, uh, JM Michael Strunisky, like, you know, I think he was actually f friends with um, Alfred Bester. But um, he's written some amazing books, but he really delved into the psychic power stuff thing. So let's so i was wondering what my the reason i'm saying that i was wondering whether maybe when they were writing judge dread um with anderson at the site site call maybe they went with that maybe they brought had a look at the, you know maybe they got inspired by that and because i love the whole you know, yeah, I, don't know. I think if you look at what was going on in the uk at that time hmm. like the late 70s and things like that you had Tomorrow, people, you had Sapphire and Steel, yeah, you know, yeah. Really, you know, linked around psionics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's where I think the side division came from mm. recognition, psychic powers, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, Sapphire and Steel is amazing, you know. You kind of go when you're a kid. I mean, I don't, I don't even get it when I was a kid, I watched them, but I really don't understand them. Tomorrow, people watched it, didn't really understand it. Now I watch it and I go, oh, right, that's what it is. Like I, I binge watched Sepai and still a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, that's what that is. You know, they're like talking to each other in their heads. Like, why are they talking to each other in their head when you're a kid? You know, how does that work? But yeah, uh, hey, let's let's cross back to uh, Blake Seven before we finish off. Uh, tell me about you know, fill us in about Blake Seven. Well, well, it's funny. It's funny. funny. Yeah. I used to watch, I used it, as to watch it as a kid. I don't remember, I don't remember much of season one, season, season two, or even season three. three. But what I do remember it was on TV and it was spaceship. And I was a kid that loved spaceships, so that was it. I was interested. Then there was a break for about two years and season four came out. I don't think there was a break in the UK of two years. But what I believe is uh, there was a delay in TVNZ showing it. And this would be around about. 83, 84, we'd, we'd always get things years after they, they originally yeah. screened in the UK or US. So this is probably three or four years after it finished airing, but uh, season four was a bit different. It was called Blake Seven, but there was no Blake. Yeah. Run by a guy named Avon. You finally get to meet Blake in the final episode, and then they all die. <laughs> so... Now, so the story behind Blake is that um, it's like they're all prisoners on a ship, aren't they? Like dissidents, dissidents so, chucked out. Yeah, goes back a bit further than that. Um, mm. Everything's controlled by the Federation, mind control sort of thing. And if mm. you uh, end up rebelling or doing something against, you know, the fascism type thing, if you try and break out against the fascist state, like these guys were doing, they were having meetings, secret meetings. Mm. Um, these soldiers came in, busted them, broke it up, arrested them. So Rog Blake was put on this, again, typical sci-fi trope, put mm. them on a spaceship to go to a distant planet penal colony. So mm. while they're on their way, no worries. All of a sudden, there's this strange ship that just is drifting in space. The transport pulls up next to it. Mm. They send the prisoners on board because they uh, too many of the officers were getting killed. So they thought, right, cannon fodder, we'll send you over there. The ship read their minds and turned around and says, no. Nah, I'll have you. Mm. And then disconnected and that started the whole thing. And they, they realized that they could, they had this huge power, this amazing ship called the Liberator, or they called it the Liberator, this alien craft that no one knew anything about. No one knew who built it, where it was from, who owned it. It was adrift in space. And um, they end up using that to mount their freedom fighting campaign. Mm. Yeah, that's the Liberator right there. Although I will say this, I did a bit of a binge watch of uh, season one and two, mm. uh, maybe two, three years ago. And um, man, it didn't age well. It did not yeah. Well. well, that was the thing. Like I watched, uh, I think, the first two episodes and I was like, this is really slow moving. Because, you know, when you used to so much, you know, fast moving stories now, you know, and and then you watch these really slowly developing um, storylines. It's the same thing as watching like really old um, Doctor Who shows, which I've, I've been binging through like maybe about 
20, first 20 seasons so far. I think I'm up to season 21 now. And you kind of go, well, yeah, they're great stories, but they're really slow, you yes. know? Yes. And, and then they're very flowery, but they're, they're as a, as a, as a canon to what we have now, it's such a great way to understand who the doctor is. And you sort of, you know, so when you see all that and then you see what they're doing with the new stuff, you go, I can't even be bothered watching. I, I like watch the first episode of this last season and the um, 20 minutes into the first, second one, I went, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, and I, was, and I was really excited. I was really excited to have Jodie Foster as, uh, Jodie Whittaker as Doctor Who. I was so excited because I was like, yeah, let's go for a change. And it's like, but the story writers, the script writers, rubbish script writers, soap opera friggin' people who don't know how to never probably watch the episode of Doctor Who from the past. See, if I'm, I'm, a, I'm a researcher kind of guy. So if I'm writing something, I need to delve into everything about this, right? If I'm doing superhero, I need to, why do this? Why does he do that? Right? Why does, why is she seeing what she's saying? And if he, if he's like, and how, why is, what is he going to do when he's in how, why, what's the background? But these guys just come and goes, this will happen. What happened last week? Don't care. <laughs> you know? And um, yeah, so and but I th I think the great thing is that like having some things like Blake Seven, having stuff like Doctor Who, um, the past shows, um, seasons, and even the last eleven, ten of the last ones of this one, and Judge Dredd, you've got so much uh, amazing groundwork for you know a universe of live um, like live action shows and stuff do you did you watch um just well I remember did you watch the, um there was a doctor um judge death uh animated uh movie i think there was a judge death um animation let me see what called. came out a few years ago super fiend Right. Yep, super fiend. This is here. Uh, for those guys who want to watch it, it's a really, really good, crazy looking um, um, animation. It's really top notch. And see, that's something that I think 2000 AD should be doing. If not CGI, why not do it cell shading? Yeah. Um, but for crying out loud, do it as why a not? It. Do it as anim do it as animation. You know, you don't have to and get a animation, right? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we just want the product. We just want a good story. Don't know how, it doesn't matter if it's delivered as an animation or delivered as a live action. Just give us what we want and give, you know, as long as it's good. And, and true to the all of these, material. sorry? And true to the source material. That's it. Because you've already got all this. You've got piles of stuff, right? All you got to do is just go, the storyboard's there. The story's there. All you got to do is go get a couple of, guys to just go okay get us here's a couple you know a couple million dollars don't need 20 30 100 million dollars to do it here's five million dollars talk to uh, talk to a streaming site uh, you know the reason i say this i just watched um re-sleeped altered carbon have you seen it yet on netflix not yet that's yeah. on my must, must watch list when yeah. i get it so that. yeah so there's like a whole movie trying to give you a a backstory to the main character of you know an altered carbon uh takashi kovacs so that's in rather than making a movie guess what here's an animation lower cost than what you'd have to do for live action people nobody gets hurt everything's drawn and that's why manga and anime is so popular because it doesn't cost that much to produce, but it does it is so good. That's why you're wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt, right? That's right. Um, and so people, you know, and the other thing is that it's more fun in animation. You can do, you can blow up a ship 
and it won't cost you to build build, build it again if something broke off it <laughs> accidentally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, I think people are so concerned about live action that they don't understand that the beauty of um, animation, and you know, and or even CGI. Uh, like I was, yeah, back to the um, orbital, you know, um, that I was talking about earlier. They took a manga and the characters and it looks beautiful. This um, if I spell it right, there it is. It's such a it's it's a real you know it's, it's set up set on a spaceship. Uh, Amazon in space, right? And it's just, um, it's all CGI. And the characters move really nicely. Uh, done in 2005, right? Uh, 2009. So it's 11 years ago. And then I, you know, I saw that um, yesterday. And then it, uh, like just before, the day before, I'd just seen Resleeved. And you can see within 11 years how far they come with, with the whole same CGI working of it. And you, if you look at the two, you can see the, the amazing way you can use CGI animation now compared to just 11 years ago. And but there isn't too much of a difference mm. in the in the style of it all, um, you know. And yeah, it frustrates me when you have like this much work, <laughs> you know, probably about this much. We're looking at about two thousand. Uh, like, wait, aren't we up to three thousand issues now? I'm not sure. I haven't bought an actual copy and man. Yeah, dude. I think we're we'd be up to three thousand now with them. It was um I think it was recently it was just um celebrating the mo uh what numbers are we up to? Um I tell you what recent... man, you just got me thinking as well, you know, to bring it full circle back to two thousand AD. I mentioned yeah. that game, uh, uh, Rogue Trooper Redo. Yep. Now, the cinematics in that. You can go on YouTube and you can watch just the cinematics, not the gameplay. Oh, yeah. I just put it up here. Man, it is yeah. just like, whoa. Mm. It's incredible. Well, it they were... Um, oh, I put... Where are we... Because when I, when I was looking for that one, when you're talking about like Future Shocks one, it came up. Right. So I grabbed that. So there's an ABC Warriors um, history there. There's also, yeah. So this is the um, Rogue Trooper, the movie. So they've taken full M M FMV sequence from the Rogue Trooper game and put it all together as a, as a movie, which yeah. is how long is this? It's, it's long. The cinematics were brilliant. Let me just I check. really enjoyed it. Let me just yeah. If this will work. Now let me know if this is coming through. Are you watching us on Facebook? Let me try that again. So, um, entire screen. Yep, let's try that. Let me know if you can see this because. Oh, I see that here, but uh, nothing on Facebook. Oh, hold on a second. Yep. If you're seeing it, seeing it, then you're seeing it on Facebook. So this is Rogue Trooper, the sequence. They improved the graphics when they remastered it, by the way. Hmm. But they move so well, though. It's not like it's not a, too much of a rugged movement. It's like they actually move like people. 
you know, like a natural move, even at the, like, it's such a low, you know, CGI thing, but. That was one of the things that upset people. The fact they gave each one of the GIs a different haircut. Rogue was the only one with a mohawk. Yeah. Minor detail. I'm, I can let that go. Was it, was it, I mean, was it supposed to, um, they all had mohawks. All the GIs had mohawks, even the women. Yeah. Mm. Now, you. what was the other one we were talking about? Um, so we're looking... Yeah, so it's a, this future shot, the story of 2080 is available to rent or buy from, I guess, from... YouTube on uh, Red, I guess. Right. Okay. Uh, there must have been on Red that I saw. But that was before the days of YouTube Red. Uh, as I yeah, said, it was, so it was free. Thing I, saw. It was, I saw it was free when I saw it. Yeah, me too. All right, dude. Uh, we almost get into the two hour mark. So I think um, we might as well say kakite and all and probably catch up another time. But man, you know, I mean, we could go on for this forever. Uh, about 2080 because there's so many different you know storylines and stuff but um yeah there's there's so many different characters and so many well-developed characters with their own universes their own planets to work with and then you throw in the dark judges <laughs> you know? it's like all they want is to kill everybody you know it's like okay and now everybody unites to fight against them. So you got a common enemy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Crime is life. The punishment is death. Yeah. yeah. And judge is the law. Yeah. All right. Uh, cheers for catching up, man. This is awesome. Oh, my pleasure, brother. I've enjoyed it too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I forgot so much of the characters and stuff. So reading, you know, getting through with you is like amazing. Just Oh, me too, man. As I say, I I was forgetting the names of the artists, of the writers, and everything like that. And you yeah. mentioned, one. oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew, I knew that um, Bolin. I mean, I could tell by Bolin's art, but I didn't know um, that um, Steve Dillon had worked on it as well. So I mean, you know, Steve Dillon's one of my favorite um, artists. With you know, especially with the covers for Preacher and stuff. And um, yeah, all right, let's close it off here. And um, any last words? Oh, also, also plug, plug your music. <laughs> Gunner nine, 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 nine at bandcamp.com. Is that four nines or three nines? Four nines. At bandcamp. Bandcamp.com. All right. So it's like, uh, bandcamp.com and then forward slash gunner nine, 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 nine. Nope. Prefix is no. Gunner 9999. And then... So, uh, Gunner 9999. Well, yeah, four nines. Dot bandcamp dot com. Excellent. So, yeah. So, guys, check out um, Gunner's um, music. He's, uh, he's a session um, session guitarist as well as he's got his own album he's got three albums out there check it out on, on uh, Bandcamp but also childhood friend of mine who got me in 2000 AD and I always basically go back to the fact that he's the one who got me into comics hardcore that's why I'm where, where I am with writing and you know doing comics cheers brother appreciate it thank, thank you for you your time till next time mate. yeah man we'll Mark go up and talk about something else <laughs>